Model steam engines and boilers part 32, the method that I used to make split main bearings for model steam engines. In the last episode of this series I showed the fettling of the castings and the basic shaping. This is a compilation video and these are extracts from a video series that is currently available for my Patreon supporters to watch. Only episode 1 of this series is live on YouTube. This video has been made using edited extracts from the series. All about machining the crankshaft bearings, which are currently sat in four pieces on the bench, but not for long. I'm about to solder the parts together using this stuff, it's called Fryer Lux Paint. And all it is is ground up solder mixed in with some flux, and you just brush it on, put the parts together, heat the parts to melt the solder, and once they've cooled, everything's soldered together. That's the plan anyway, but sometimes as the flux boils, the parts move around, so you need something in your hand ready to move the parts back into position. I'm using an old small paintbrush. I'm really hoping that the parts don't move around and so far so good. In this clip I'm applying some more solder to the joint to make it stronger. But then, when I started on the other part, it danced about all over the place. So I used a pair of long nose pliers that I keep in this part of the workshop, and this is just to put the top part back in place. Once again, I'm applying some more solder to the joint to make sure that it's as strong as possible. There are definitely two schools of thought when doing this job, and if I'm perfectly honest, the best way to do it is to solder them together like this, and then drill and tap two holes in the top of each bearing top cap to hold it very securely in place. But I'm not going to do that, I think my soldering is going to be strong enough. And the important thing to remember is if everything is just held together with soft solder, it's not very strong, so when I come to machine these parts in the four-jaw chuck, I'm going to be gentle with them. In this clip, I'm applying some more marking out blue, sent to me by a very kind gentleman called Norman, and I don't know how I managed without it. I used to have some a long time ago, but it just dried up in the bottle. Painting these parts blue will just help me to see where the centre line is between the top cap and the main bearing. So how do you find the centre line? Well, you put the part in the four-jaw chuck, and then I generally use a lathe tool, but you can get wigglers and wobblers and wagglers or whatever they're called, centre finders and all manner of gadgets. All I do is fit the part in the chuck in an approximate position where I think it should be and then rotate the four-jaw chuck by hand and move the lathe tool in and out until I find the centre. It's very much a case of trial and error. After I've found the centre point, I gently drill it with a centre drill, followed by a quarter of an inch diameter drill, followed by, for instance, a three-eighths of an inch diameter drill, then finally, one imperial drill size less than the half inch that I require. Even though this is quite a good finish, I want a reamed finish, not a drilled hole finish. As the hole is just one imperial size less than half an inch, I just put a reamer through, but please note, the lathe is now in what is called back gear, so it's running a lot slower than it was originally. If you ream at a high speed, often the hole becomes slightly oversized. As I mentioned earlier, because these parts are held together with soft solder, even though they're clamped in a four-jaw chuck, I took it easy all the way. Everything was drilled and reamed very gently. Here's the clever bit. All I have to do now is remove the component that I've just finished by slackening off the top jaw and the jaw nearest to me, which is on the left-hand side of this picture, and then I fit the other bearing, tightening the top jaw and the one on the left only. And that way, the bearing block is in pretty much the same position as the other one. I can now resume the machining operation in exactly the same way as I did with the other one. And don't forget, when doing this job, when parts are soft soldered together, take it easy. Once I've centre drilled it, I go all the way through with a quarter of an inch diameter drill, and then I use a drill bit that is one imperial size less than half an inch, which is the finished size that I need. I've already slowed the lathe down by engaging back gear, and now the ream is going into the hole. Nice and slowly, don't rush it, give the tool time to cut. Generally speaking, a lot of people rush the cutting process. And not wishing to repeat myself too much, don't be too heavy duty with this, because it's held together with soft solder. A quick test fit with the half inch round silver steel crankshaft tells me that everything is okay. All I need to do now is just take a facing cut across the front 
to make it the same size as the other one, and I'm going to check this by holding the other part against it. Yes, I would say they're very much the same size. When the engine is finished, one of these bearings is going to be on the pedestal and the other one's going to be on the bed. But for test purposes, to make sure that everything is in line, the two main bearings, complete with the crankshaft fitted, are sat on the bed. And when I put some pressure on top of the main bearings to hold them firmly down onto the bed, surprisingly, they don't tighten up. So I would say this is quite successful. Everything seems to line up perfectly. When these bearings are finally finished, I'm going to put studs in the bottom part and have a nut on the stud at the top. In this clip, I'm marking out the position for the holes, and now I'm going to do something that I normally would not do. I'm going to see if it's possible to use a Proxon motor tool clamped into a drill stand to drill the holes in the tops of the main bearings. I'm using a spotting drill because I don't have a centre drill that will fit in this small chuck. A spotting drill is a much shorter drill so it doesn't wobble about as much. In this clip it looks like I've marked the positions for the holes in the wrong position, but I haven't. It's just that one side of the top cap overhangs the main casting slightly and that will be trimmed off. The Proxon motor tool in the drill press actually worked fine, but I'm going to do the rest of the operations in the larger machine because I need to use the depth stop. I'm drilling clearance size for 5BA, but I only need to drill the clearance size through the top cap, not right down into the bottom part. If you want to know about tapping sizes and clearance sizes, just type BA tapping sizes and clearance sizes into Google. There's lots of information up there. I printed out a couple of charts that I have on the wall in the workshop. The trouble is, the tapping sizes and clearance sizes are often metric and I don't have that many metric drills. I need to buy some more. Here I'm tapping the hole down into the main part of the casting with a 5BA tap, being very careful not to snap it off in the hole. I intend to fit some glass oilers to the centre part of the top caps. As far as I remember from looking at the drawing, the thread originally shown on the drawing for this part is quarter by 40 to take a much bigger oiler, and I think a lubricator of that size would be vastly over scale, so I'm using the small ones. But if you do use larger oilers that require a quarter by 40 thread, drill a 1 16th hole down into the bearing and don't go all the way through with the tapping size drill. Please remember that these are the main crankshaft supports, and a quarter of an inch hole in the top cap would lessen the bearing surface area. Because the thickness of this casting was cast at 3 eighths of an inch, it's fairly impossible to machine it to 3 eighths of an inch, so I have no choice but to use needle files, sandpaper and whatever method I can find to smooth off the casting. You often come across errors in engineering drawings, and I don't understand why, because some of these drawings have been out for many, many years, and people must have written in and said, oh, there's an error on the drawing, but nothing ever gets done about it, so you're wasting your time. By the time these parts are painted, and I am going to paint them, I haven't finished cleaning them up yet, but I think they'll look okay. All I need to do now is finish cleaning up these bearings, then mark out and drill the holes in the bases of the bearings, so I can mount one of them to the bed, and the other one to the pedestal. So for the moment, that is it for the section about making the main bearings. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.